The Economics of Public Holidays As a fellow member of the ordinary working class, public holidays are something which I definitely look forward to every year, along with millions of people around the world. They're nice little surprises throughout the year which give you time to relax, chill out, and allow you to do whatever you want and get paid for it while doing so. So in this video, we will explore what exactly are these holidays and why do we actually have them, examples of countries and how COVID has affected their holidays, and who actually bears the cost of these holidays and the overall effect of them on the economy. Now you guys already know this, but a public holiday is essentially a state-mandated holiday, which is a non-working day during the year. In most countries, these are paid days for which the employee doesn't have to come to work. Some countries even have laws requiring employers to pay their workers at least one and a half times their normal pay if they work on this day. But sure, great, free paid days off during the year, but what exactly is the significance of this in the first place? I mean, in developed economies, the working class already gets two days off for the weekend, gets paid days of annual leave, sick days, and on top of that, public holidays as well? Well, depending on the holiday, they usually mark a significant religious event like Christmas, Easter, or national events specific to each individual country's history. For example, here in Australia, we have a public holiday called Anzac Day, which is a very significant holiday in our history. But anyone outside of Australia or New Zealand won't even know the fuss about this at all. Now, these holidays allow us to relax, travel, and enjoy some much-needed downtime that we all deserve. Then, of course, at the macro level, this means that these holidays contribute a decent amount to the economy in terms of the tourism industry. It is kind of expected that the more holidays that people will get, the more they will be willing to go out and travel. But do all public and national holidays have the same expenditure and effect on the tourism industry? Well, a study done in 2018 on the Chinese tourism industry stated that people view each holiday differently and their willingness to go out there and consume changes. For example, you might expect that a week-long national holiday would cause the most consumption among people since it allows for prolonged travel and more leisure time. However, this is not the case. Instead, people used the weekends and went on short holidays up to two days rather than utilizing the longer holidays. These short and micro bursts of holidays showed the strongest effect on the promotion of tourism spending in China. It can be said that these short holidays are nice and quick, allow you to recharge and get back into work for the week ahead. Compare that to a week or two week long holiday and the effect it has on an individual coming back to work is much much different. It was also highlighted that people looking to travel for just one day or a two day weekend holiday was increasing by 8.3% and 8.6% respectively, which supports the case. But why is this so? Could it just be the cultural slash economic differences of China to the rest of the Western world or something else? Well, it could be that, since the Chinese have had their own societal changes and expectations in regards to holiday reforms. Or it could be due to the economic concept of the law of diminishing marginal utility. To put it in simple terms, this law basically says that the more you will consume something, the less enjoyment you will get out of it, if you keep having it. For example, you love a good pizza. Having a pizza once in a while is nice, but having it for breakfast, lunch and dinner would eventually drive you insane. So applying this law to public holidays, the utility achieved from a two-day short holiday is much, much higher than, say, a week-long holiday. This could be one of the reasons why there is a growing number of people preferring to travel on short holidays. Now let's look at a general example from Australia. The Public Holidays Act in each respective state of Australia allows an additional day off on Monday if the public holiday falls on a Saturday or Sunday. This effectively means that if Christmas is on a Sunday, everyone will get the Monday off, which means that people essentially have a long weekend. Often people will combine this with their paid time off work to form a decent long holiday. However, due to the effects of COVID, things obviously have to now change. It's estimated that between March 2020 to March 2021, as much as 2.2 million Australians were set to go overseas for a holiday. Now, if you don't know the situation here in Australia, Basically, everyone is banned from going outside the country if the travel is non-essential. This means that the travel plans have to either get cancelled or changed. Now, 2.2 million Australians represent over 10% of the population, and we can expect that a large number of these people will instead be taking a domestic holiday, which will then boost the internal tourism. 
On average, these people spend about 20 nights overseas, but domestically, it is only about 4 nights or less. Knowing how Australians are, these people are likely to then make use of the public holidays using the long weekends option and spread their holidays out over the year. This is of course just one of the options that they can consider and just one example. But if even just a small portion of those 2.2 million Australians decide to take vacation domestically instead, this will do very well for the economy. Looking at the UK for this year, due to their strict COVID restrictions, the economy lost a significant amount of money for the two bank holidays in May. Consumer spending dropped over 25% in the month of May when compared to 2019, which shows that even though the public holidays were there, people were just not able to go out and spend it. However, if the circumstances were normal, then those two holidays usually boost the economy by $147 million. Additionally, another study showed that each bank holiday was worth around £253 to the average business owner due to the increased spending, but about one third of the business owners actually stayed shut despite this. And you can definitely imagine why they would choose to stay shut. On one hand, you need to pay your workers a higher wage on public holidays to stay open and take advantage of new business, but on the other, you can stay closed, have a break, but miss out on potential business. Look, it's definitely a tough choice to make for small businesses, and it depends on each individual business owner. Now, there are talks to have a potential additional holiday in October, since in May, the UK was in lockdown. However, this again poses some difficulties. On the bright side, it will definitely increase tourism, hospitality and retail sales and turnover. But on the other hand, businesses will again need to shut down for an extra day. And some businesses simply cannot handle this again, while still having to pay their employees and dealing with the productivity loss. Looking at another example of increasing public holidays, this is something that New Zealand is also considering. Jacinda Ardern spoke about potentially adding more public holidays for Kiwis to explore the country domestically. Now, as you guys might know, the country has done very well during the COVID crisis so far. At the time of making this video, the country has only had 18 cases in the last seven days. However, you guys might want to put it either to the leadership of Jacinda or due to the fact that the country is so secluded from the rest of the world, the country nonetheless is back on its feet. Now, since New Zealand is very cautious of who it lets out and who it lets in, the domestic tourism is the only option to boost up the tourism industry at this stage. So this additional public holiday will allow more locals to enjoy the amazing scenery for sure. But is it a good idea? Well, it might as well be. Because for a country like this, the tourism industry employs a massive 14.5% of all workers in the country. So this will boost the travel economy domestically in the short term for sure. Now, of course, for the travel and tourism industry, these holidays spark up some additional boost of income throughout the year. But what does traveling on public holidays actually look like for the average consumer like you and me? Well, this is where the hidden or not so hidden cost comes into play, which we might not even realize or we might just live with it. Often businesses have the power to increase prices this day, and this could be simply due to the fact of supply and demand or just some cheeky price gouging to take advantage of the increased people on these days. For example, here in Australia, restaurants and businesses will often add a 1-2% to charge on top of their normal prices on public holidays or even weekends. Now, if you're out with your friends and family, this is something that you will just accept as you're there to have a good time and after all, it's only 1%, right? Looking at the perspective from the government, these holidays are vital for any successful nation. In their eyes, it gives a type of balance between productivity of the working class versus the profitability of businesses. For the government, it has to provide the optimal number of public holidays in a year to have maximum efficiency for the economy. Too many holidays and the productivity drops, people become lazy and innovation goes down. People may spend more since they're on holidays, causing economic activity to go up, causing a multiplier effect. However, we do need to take into account the fact that people don't have unlimited money, there is only a fixed budget. Therefore, too many holidays will cause the opposite effect and spending will eventually go down. Too little holidays and you have a working class that's overworked and tired and that may cause innovation to go down anyways. A study highlighted that countries with huge varieties of tourist destinations and high disposable incomes were better off having more public holidays as this will provide an overall boost to the nation. Now look, 
Public holidays are generally good for the economy, as in the positives outweigh the negatives. But when it comes to actually deciding how many of these holidays should be in a given year, or deciding on whether or not to add or remove holidays, each country's individual factors like tourism, household income, and the overall state of the economy should be taken into account. What are your thoughts about this? How many public holidays does your country have? Do you live in Cambodia where you have over 25 public holidays per year? Or the UK, which has one of the least amounts? Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.